Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at what is meant by irradiance. So let's get into it. Now in the particles and waves part one topic, we're now on to section four, which is called the inverse square law. And we're going to start by looking at this new term called irradiance. So what is irradiance first of all? Well, it says here that irradiance is the power per unit area of electromagnetic radiation instant on a surface. But a simpler way to think about irradiance is that it's kind of like an intensity or brightness of light. So if light's got a higher intensity, then it's got a higher irradiance. And we can describe irradiance using this equation here, I equals P over A, where I is the irradiance of radiation measured in watts per square meter, P is the power of radiation instant on a surface measured in watts, and A is the area of the surface measured in meters squared. It then goes on to say that in this section, we consider light being emitted from a point source. A point source is a small, compact source that emits radiation uniformly in all directions. Often we can assume that a small bulb is a point source. And it tends to be that the smaller the bulb you use, the more like a point source it actually is. It then goes on to say that the volume that will be irradiated from any point source of light will be a sphere. This means that we may have to use the area of a sphere in our calculations. And remember you get this on the relationship sheet in your exam. So it says that the area of a sphere is equal to 4 pi r squared where a sphere is the area of the sphere measured in meters squared, where r is the distance from a point source of light, which is the same as the radius of the sphere measured in meters. Now, just show you a quick simulation to help you visualize this idea of the sphere. So if you look here, it says that a 100 watt light bulb converts electrical energy at a rate of 100 joules per second. The electrical energy is converted to heat and light. If the bulb converts 25% of the electrical energy into light energy, then it radiates 25 joules of energy per second in all directions. And if the light is being emitted in all directions from this point source, then the light is going to form a sphere. So if we look here, you'll see that we have a sphere formed around the point source. And it says that the irradiance of light falling on a surface is defined as the energy per second reaching each square meter of the surface. And down here it tells you this is the light energy reaching the surface area. Now we've just seen that the equation for irradiance is irradiance equals power over area. And we've just seen what the units and so on are for those. And if you then look at what happens to the irradiance of the light from the bulb, i.e. the intensity, when I click next, you'll see that it gets fainter and fainter until it's really just a faint yellow colour. And it tells us here why this happens. So it says as radiation spreads out from the light source, the energy is spread over a larger area. The radiance of the light decreases as the radiation travels further from the light source. Now I'll just show you that again, but we expect that when we get further away from a point source of light, that the irradiance of the light is going to drop off, it's going to decrease. And the opposite is true, so as we get closer to a point source of light, the irradiance should increase. Going back to the notes, just to finish off, it says here that an understanding of irradiance is important for several things. So things like investigating the composition of Earth's atmosphere, that's just looking at what Earth's atmosphere is made up of, studying solar activity, improving the performance of solar cells, and remember solar cells were looked at in the electricity topic, specifically within the subtopic on semiconductors and PN junctions, where solar cells take in light to produce a current and therefore a voltage, and they're found in solar panels. And lastly, we've got laser safety and classification. And the classification of lasers here refers to the different types of lasers you get. So you get more powerful lasers which can be more dangerous and more damaging to the eye for example, but you also get safer lasers which you might have seen in your physics classroom for example. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.